The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon and welcome to the uh, December 4th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that Egypt should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, right now, you've got the markets. They're having a great day. You've got everything in the uh, green. Uh, you've got the Dow's up 191 points. The S&P's up 21. NASDAQ's up 46. Russell's up 14. Uh, semis are up 1.5% or 24 points. So what you and I are going to do is try to figure out was yesterday a bottom? Is this a counter trend rally? And we'll spend time doing that. Of course, what I'd love to do during this next 60 minutes is hear from you. Because this show is really all about you. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll go ahead and take a look at your instrument, whatever it might be, for whatever time frame. Try to figure out what buyers and sellers are doing. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there. You can just send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Uh, leading the charge to the upside dollar-wise, it's Google, 25 bucks. Uh, you've got Shopify up 22. Kodiak signs his up 11. That's 24% to the downside workday of eight, uh, four, I'm sorry, 5%, $8 and change. Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals off 8% or 555. In Structure Inc. off 380 or 7%. So there's certainly things to look at, but I want to look at what you want to look at. And the first question that came in was from uh, Larry. And Larry is asking the question, and he's noticing that from time to time, profile levels are different. And so he's just asking me to try to explain, you know, how, how to use that. And I understand Larry's frustration. Certainly I do. Um, because I would like to, um, um, I'm a very structured individual. Most folks that are subscribers to my newsletter, they most certainly would know that. And I think it's just part of the uh, Virgo, the, the Virgo trance, so to speak. We just like things just a certain way. And when they're not a certain way, eh, we start to pull our hair out. That's uh, why I have the receding forehead. You can't see it right now, but you've seen it. It's receding out there. Let's just try to stay on track here. Now, the, the issue is uh, we use the tools that we have available to us. Um, and one of the tools that we use are these TAS market profiles, and they help us to identify levels of support or resistance. Now, without them, you and I wouldn't know. So it's better to trade with them, even if uh, from time to time, Larry, they're confusing. Now, when we take a look at the equity futures contract, because your specific question was about the ES Mini and these profiles, the cool thing about them is I've got a tool that will allow me to use these profiles for different multiple time frames. The problem is we have four quarterly contracts inside the equity futures out there. And uh, what that means is that if I want to understand the longer term information, weekly, monthly, quarterly, that's what we have on our chart out here. We've got weekly in the upper left. We've got monthly in the lower uh, lower. Uh, lower left, I apologize. Weekly's in the upper right. I'll learn my right from left. Just give me a little bit of time out there. Still in elementary school. In the lower right is the uh, quarterly. Now, <clears throat> so here I've got my, in order for me to do that, Larry, I can either use a continuous contract, so that's one way to do it, or I can use my synthetic version, which does a better job of stitching and etching the uh, contracts together. So, for example, if I were to just use the December contract, we're still in the December contract. Well, I'll show you. Here's what the December, so here's my synthetic synthetic version. Here is the December contract. And you will see in the bottom left what's got monthly and the bottom right that's got the quarterly. There's no way that there's enough data to be able to provide us with profile information. On the weekly basis, there is. But when the contract rolls over, which it's going to do in about seven, eight days, uh, seven, eight, nine days, I don't recall the exact um, how many days, but 
right around there, uh, then you're getting all new, fresh information. So what do you do about the past? Well, what we do about the past is we go ahead and we use Stevie's synthetic version, which always has the data, and these profiles are reliable even if they're different. What do you mean different? Well, if we take a look at this, and this is what Larry was specifically asking about, because on the weekly time frame out here, and there's really three, I'll show you a third one, the lower, uh, the lower left, the left-hand panel is the December contract. You'll see the top of that profile is 3032. Yet if you look at the uh, right-hand panel, that's my synthetic contract, you'll see prices trade at 3114 on both of the uh, weekly, uh, both the, uh, on the ES Mini, whether I use the ES Mini or use my synthetic contract out here, but you'll see the profile levels are different. 2950, 32, the question is how do you use them? Use them both. You use whatever information that you have. I, I wish that they would uh, agree with each other. And then we've got Stevie's Super Doppler tool, which uh, from time to time is going to pick up advanced um uh, indications of new profiles that are trying to form. They haven't They haven't cemented themselves. It's a weekly. We won't know that until Sunday night, Monday morning. But if you look at the left-hand panel out here, you're going to see that we have a brand new weekly profile. Well, it looks like it's a brand new weekly profile. You've got one inside the ES Mini. You've got one inside the uh, Dow out here. Uh, we're in the process, as I mentioned, about rolling the contracts out here. And here, this has got 3137. If you're asking me, Larry, which one will I use, I will use this one right Right here that we're taking a look at where well, we've got the new daily and we've got the uh, weekly profile speaking of which uh, we've got price that is running resistance uh, resistance here is at the uh, center of both the uh, daily and the weekly level out there and that's at the 3117 area so those two things match and if price is able to close above that we would say that price would move out to about the 3137 level so Larry I wish that uh, we could get all the profiles to line up it's just the way that the quarterly contracts are uh, for for the uh, for the futures uh, sometimes it's monthly uh, out there and it's but especially with the equity futures out there um, I want to use more data and by more data I even want to know what's going on on a quarterly basis and right now we know that the ES mini is above the quarterly profile 2891 that is a uh, super uber bullish out there speaking of uber bullish well I don't know if he's uber bullish or not but let's go out to Martinez California and speak with Brent Brent thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you this uh, this morning I'm doing well, Steve. I just came out of the dentist not too long ago unscathed, which is always good. And That is a good uh, thing. I will be in the dentist chair tomorrow morning, hoping for the same result. Not my favorite place to be, but always happy to be done with it and, and not have any issues. Uh, no doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, DD, is that uh, the DuPont? Is that what you want to take a look at? That is the one I have a question about today and in my particular question is that it looks like it's been in this consolidation for oh, going back to August or so from around you know 73 to 63 and we're now down towards that lower end of that range and, and uh, just what you saw with it is there is that something you think is tradable that ten dollar range or where it's at now just wanted to get your opinion on it sure so the uh the weekly chart, first, I'm just going to pull over the weekly chart. The weekly chart shows some potential promise in the fact that price has been stretching. Each time price gets down into this area, the price is stretching, doing it with less relative energy out there. So there is some potential. Uh, would the weekly chart right now, as the way that you and I look at it, get us into a trade? The answer is no. But uh, we're going to go to a hard break. Brent, when we come back, we'll take a look at the daily. We'll take a look at the monthly right now. DuPont is trading below all three profile levels, the bottom of all three profile levels, daily, weekly, and monthly. That's never good, but we're still going to search and see if we can find a bottom for Brent in Martinez, California. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 177. S&P's up 19. We're on the line with uh, Brent in Martinez, California, and we're taking a look at uh, Dupont um, ticker symbol DD out here. And uh, so, Brent, during the break, I, I see what you are likely looking at. Now, this is just a guess, but if we take a look at Dupont, uh, the first time price moved down into these levels. It's trading right now at about 63 bucks out here, 63 and change. But the first time that price moved down to that level, as far back on the left-hand uh, side of my chart, is April, uh, I'm sorry, May 15, 2019. 7.3 uh, million shares as price moved down there. Then price moves down there and gets tested and rejected on August 28th. What do I mean by tested and rejected? Price actually got below the low, which was 63.62 and did it with less volume, 6.3 million shares. So Brent, that certainly qualified as a failure on price and volume. And then what was odd, and sometimes this just simply happens. I mean, it ha what, what happens, happens. And that was on uh, October 10th was another test of that level. Because as you mentioned, there's you can clearly see the consolidation, but with more volume. But nonetheless, uh, price on the uh, very next trading session generated, generated a, a bullish reversal candle and uh, bull sash, and price just moved off of that. Um, so where are we at? Well, yesterday's move below 63. 62, and that's the level out there, a level that we could be looking at, was with a lighter, I was with a lighter volume, 5.5 million shares. Now it's the, you know, right after the Thanksgiving holiday and snowstorms going on up there. I don't know, Brent, if that has an impact or not. Um, you know, you could say maybe you're, you're gearing yesterday against the uh, volume day on October 10th. Um, you know, that had 7.6 million shares, but there was still a close below that swing point. So 
I don't know. I, I would say, is it the volume analytics that you're taking a look at? That's part of it, yeah. And just, again, the, the, you know, it's been in this range, and it's, it's starting to do a little something today. I'd want to see some follow through. Maybe get above that level you're showing there, that, that 63, 63 62. 62. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would. Uh, I mean, that in essence is the beginning of the consolidation pattern to the downside, and the consolidation pattern to the upside was probably the June fourth high at seventy six fifty. Um, you know, it does have successive lower highs out here, um, but and you've got resistance uh, at the sixty five thirty five level. That would be the bottom of its daily profile. There's resistance, Stevie's red line as well, which is trading out at 65.09. You know, as I mentioned, the weekly chart has been showing promise, but right now this week it doesn't necessarily show that promise. If I were to look for some type of bottoming signal longer term on the monthly time frame, what we have out here, if anything, uh, let's just do our wave count to the uh, downside, see where that's at. Well, you've well, Brent, did you know that on a monthly basis that uh, this month, the month of December, it entered into wave number seven? That's why I call you, Steve. You're, oh, the, you're the ace when it comes to all that stuff. So yeah, so so the monthly's got some potential, a little bit of promise, but as we know, um, the monthly or these wave counts can continue to extend. We're on the monthly chart, so it can continue moving lower out here. If it did move lower, Brent, the actual buying area would be about fifty dollars and three cents on the longer term. But it do have a potential bottoming signal on the monthly and the weekly. And so therefore, what you'd really like to see is something to come through for you on the daily time frame. And we just don't have it right now. Today's candle, even though price is moving higher, it's it's a it's a uh, it's a Harami candle, which is not a bullish or, for me. It's not a bullish or bearish signal out there. It's an insight. Okay, I'm just always looking, you know that, Steve, and I just absolutely trying to trying to see what you know. I already have some trades on right now, so I'm not gonna have to do anything. But I just always try to find stuff and always looking around for potential buys. I don't do a lot of shorting, to be honest with you. I've done puts and I've done and I mainly do options on whatever I'm doing. I do own some shares of certain things that pay dividends, sure. but in general, I just try to. To me, it's an effective way, at least for me, to do it. Where I don't have to put as much money at risk. I'm leveraging more shares. I just, you know, you have to give yourself time. There's just a way it has to be done, that, and it seems to work for me. So not for everybody, but it's been effective for me. So no, and kind that's, of going and with that's, what, work, what works, you know. Look, and that's what it's all about. And, and what I, if I were to come up with one word to uh, just, just uh, uh, as the uh, one word to describe what I believe you're describing to me, it's called confidence. And you've got confidence in the tools and the systems that you use out there. And that is really what it's all about. Because if you've got no confidence, I, I, I think it's hard to accomplish anything. You know, if you're a golfer and you step up to the shot and you don't have confidence in it, you're likely not going to hit a very good shot. So it's no different in life. It's no different in trading and investing and putting your hard-earned capital to to risk out there. So, yeah, you, you've you got it. And uh, as always, I appreciate the call. Is there anything else that I can do for you on uh, DuPont? I think that's it. You've covered it well, and just you know, as usual, I'll just you know be patient and kind of watch it and see what it does. But I just wanted your opinion. I really appreciate you going over everything you did, and sure, just have a great day. And, and uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. I, sounds you know, great. Tomorrow, always tomorrow, be, tomorrow always be good. looking. And if I find something else, I'll call you about it. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Let me just check the email, see if there's any emails that have come in. Uh, uh, David, uh, so we've got one here from David G. David says, I've been looking at JD.com on a weekly, and I see a long-term A to B equals CD pattern. So let's go ahead and uh, put that in here, and let's actually follow along with uh, David. Let's take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart. And so I'm going to imagine that the A to B equals CD pattern that David is referring to uh, is the one that uh, starts down here on a weekly basis, November 19th. That's your A point. Uh, what I would be using for my B point is April 1st, and then the reach Tracement looks like down into the week of May 27th. That would create my A to B equals CD. Just out of curiosity, as price moved above 3163, which had 93 million shares, was with volume. It was with uh, lighter volume. So it doesn't mean that it can't complete the A to B equals CD pattern on a weekly basis. Just hasn't, uh, you know, it's not like shoppers were 
uh, the doors open and everybody was running in to try to uh, get that uh, special blue light special. Isn't that what they called it at Kmart, a blue light special? In any event, um, you're you're saying that it looks like this should get to uh, 38 bucks. Um, yeah, I mean, if the 30, if you're doing it based upon the A to B equals CD pattern, yeah, but you didn't have that conviction or volume as price uh, closed above that uh, swing point out there on the weekly basis out there. So your question is, um, where is support now on the weekly? And on the uh, daily, well, price is pulling back right now into the. Uh, sorry about that. Into the uh, weekly level of support, which would be the top of its profile, and that is 3181. You're trading at 3173. Uh, this week, price got down to about the center of the box, 3066. But support is either 3173, 3066, or 2951. 2951 being the bottom of that profile. This is an equally distributed profile, meaning there's no edge on a weekly basis for buyers or sellers. And uh, so all three of those levels are certainly areas of support. If we take a look at uh, JD.com and pull over uh, my uh, weekly chart here, you'll also see that price is sitting right on the oscillator and change line, Stevie's green line. So it's uh, so price is pretty much sitting here at support. And if price closes below this level, you know, several pennies, could see a move back down to 29.51 out there. Um, this is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 197, S&P 21. Let's go back and take a look at a JDCom uh, chart out there. I, I, I further read the email as well, and I know that um, David is starting to accumulate shares here, and I just want to, I want you to be cautious with that because, you know, you did a good job of identifying a potential A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. What is to make you believe, I'm throwing this out there as a question, that JD.com is not making an A to B equals CD to the downside? So right now, here's what we know. We know that price is trading below support of its daily time frame. I believe you had me focusing on the weekly. So I want to take a step back. And here what we know is that, um, well, here's what I, one of the things that I know, and I'm going to want you to know this as well, is when I took a look at the daily time frame chart and I just simply applied our, uh, our wave counts to it, well, the actual high was made with wave number seven. That was letter G. That could be a sign of a top. We talked about the sign of a bottom with uh, Brent in... Um, uh, DuPont. So, uh, and price is also trading right now below the breakout level of 3202. So you've got to be careful. This could be an A to B equal CD to the downside, setting up a nice Gartley buy pattern. Uh, and you may be able to, you may wish to really accumulate shares when that pattern completes, which could be 2918, could be 2809. So I say just be careful, but pay attention to the uh, daily time frame chart as well. I think that will assist you. Let's go out to um, Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Uh, Steve, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. My uh, pleasure, as uh, always, and um, you want to take a look at coffee futures, so tell us what you're doing and how I can help you out. Very specific question, Steve. I've been, uh, as you know, uh, trading this exclusively from the long side for a couple of months now. My question, Steve, as you look at your daily and weekly chart, could you uh, show us your indicators that give some clue to uh, provide an answer on this question. Is uh, March coffee futures, excuse me, are March coffee futures uh, here yesterday and today over 124? Uh, are these at, at risk, at risk, uh, or possibly making a top right here? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, the answer to your question is yes. Uh, the reason why we would say that, now this is a daily time frame chart, and it all depends on today, tomorrow, the next day. But if we take a look at, so I'll do a couple things. Let me just see where this is actually at wave count wise. So just give me a second to pull this up out here. So my goodness. So you've got you've got two topping signals, John. One, if we uh, come from the low that formed out here, just give me a second for my crosshair to... Uh, work. There we go. So if we take a look at uh, coming from the hammer candle on October 11th, that was a low. We begin doing our wave count to the upside. Well, it looks like uh, yes, it looks like we're going to confirm a wave number seven, letter G. That would have been yesterday. The second pattern that we have is prices moving higher, doing a less relative energy. Now, that pattern isn't a problem unless there's a bearish reversal candle. As we speak right now, we've got a bearish reversal candle. So that, that Rhodes momentum indicator signal really began forming on November 21st. And it kept on moving higher. Again, that's like your that's like the uh, weatherman saying there's a chance of rain, bring an umbrella out there. And that's what, in essence, this would be doing. But to just trade that pattern because it's stretched, you'd get creamed, you'd get crushed. You can't do that. You've got to wait for the cavalry to identify that a top or bottom, in this case here, a top is in. And the way that we do that is we just pay attention to the Japanese candlestick. So you've got a bearish engulfing candle right now, confirming both the Rhodes momentum indicator top and wave number seven and a TD9 count, with yesterday being bar number eight. So the beauty of this is you've got three topping patterns out here. However, price hasn't broken through any levels of support. And when you do get a topping pattern, the first responsibility of sellers is to try to bust out support. Well, in this case here, the first level of support is going to be 119.90, somewhere around there. Price is going to change a little bit as price moves up and down. But that's Stevie's green line. That's the oscillator and change line. If price just pulls back to that level, then sellers have done, and it holds, and sellers have done their thing, and price could resume to the upside. Whereas if price closes below Stevie's green line, the 119.90-ish area out here, that would suggest a pullback to another level of support. And that level of support would be the daily profile, which would be 113.30 out there. So on the daily time frame chart, that's what I see. But you probably, you're sneaky. I know you. You probably knew that it was wave number seven out there. <laughs> no, I uh, believe it or believe it or not, no, I uh, I didn't. I uh, 
uh, often neglect, I'm afraid to admit, to uh, label all my uh, well, daily charts you, with the Chapman we're, wave we're, count. So, uh, so thank you, you for showing you that. That's very helpful. Yeah, we're giving you credit for it, no matter what. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, there's there's three topping signals. Uh, not an A to B equals CD pattern. It doesn't look like one that has completed. Um, that A to B equals CD pattern that I see out here would give a, a much higher price projection. Well, much higher, 126.90. But yeah, you've got three topping signals out here. But I don't. What I don't know. Is this a top of significance or just a pushback to support at the 119.94 area? Um, I don't see anything that shows a top on a weekly time frame. Uh, and on the monthly time frame, if we pull this out, this uh, I don't have any, any any signs of a uh, you know of a top on on it either. So does that help Steve, you? Steve, I will uh, thank you kindly uh, and depart. Um I sure. will just leave one request, if time permits, before you close up your show, and I will hang up here. But um, Monday, I called into the show and asked you specifically to look at the January uh, WTI crude oil futures with the eye of uh, ask, uh, answering the question, were there any buy signals setting up? Um, and, of course, I uh, shared with you then I was long. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, that contract has surged back to highs just in the past two days. My question, if you have time, is to address uh, the topic, is there anything that shows up in your work that would uh, tend to lead you to think will likely uh, top short term right at this 58 and a half level, or alternatively, power right through and if so what might be higher targets but uh, yeah. if you so have time that, that'd no, be great and if you this. don't i understand yeah we're gonna do it right now um easier you know if i if i let thing go if i let something go and i put it off till later i'll forget about it but light sweet crude which has been throwing me for a little bit of a loop here here's what we know coming off of the bottom in october uh it has attained wave number four uh i'm sorry wave number uh six of potentially seven wave counts out there that seventh or sixth wave count was on november 22nd and the high on november 22nd is 58.74 so if price gets above that it effectively is going to have wave number seven price also broke down at 59.60 that's the breakdown area that's the td9 breakdown area and you know subscribers have heard me probably for weeks suggest that that is the price target the eventual price target of 59.60 um i i don't see anything at this stage here that suggests that it won't get up there but if it gets up to that resistance level 59.60 gets to wave number seven if it confirms you just got to be careful because you'd have a topping pattern up at a resistance area You bet. You bet. That was John in uh, Philly. We get back from this uh, breakout here. We're going to go take a look at questions from Philip, Tim. Uh, boy, we've got uh, four. So Steve is going to have to get on his A game, which I'll do. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, four questions, five questions, actually. Two that we can get out of the way uh, at one time. Uh, Phil wants to take a look at the IWM. I believe that Jimmy wanted to take a look at that inside the Tiger's Den as well. Phil says, I'm looking to go short the IWM at what I believe is the B to a C counter trend rally. Where would you look to put on a short for the C to D decline? So if we take a look at uh, just this chart here, Phil, you're going to see that the IWM, um, so I'll look at this here specifically versus, well, We'll go take a look at the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. But price above the daily top of its profile out there. That was at 160.08. The top of that profile would have been a logical area resistance uh, for the uh, counter trend rally to have failed. It hasn't. Price above the top of the weekly profile. And price is uh, trading in between its monthly profiles where there is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the uh, 188.48 level out there. Okay, so we've got that. But I'm still going to go with, hey, where would... Where would be the point if you want to put it on? If you've got a hankering for it, well, then the only thing that I can do, well, we could do a couple things. One, you could take a look at retracements, okay? So if we look at retracements out here from the most recent high, that's on uh, November 27 to the low of yesterday, uh, the 0.618 retracement is right about here, 161.08. It's trade at 161.12. The 0.786 is 161.90. So 161.08, 161.90, those would be some areas that you could consider. The other area to be taken a look at would be Stevie's green or red line. It is green, 161. 35. What that means here, Phil, is that you'd ideally, if you got in the trade around now or at 161.35 or wherever it might be, what you don't want to see is a close above 161.35. If you do, what that tells you is price is going to go back and make a new all-time, or not a new all-time high, but make a higher high from just a few days ago, or likely to do that out there. So the, your back, the back is, so to speak, up against the wall. And so in this time frame, right around now, if you've got the hankering for it, then uh, go for it. Now, but before you do that, what Stevie would want to do is look for a 30-minute uh, time frame chart and see if there's some type of confirmed top out here. And voila, we do see that. So what we see is an A to B equals CD pattern. The problem is it hasn't completed with any kind of bearish reversal candle. 
You also see a road momentum indicator top. Price was moving higher on a 30-minute basis, doing less relative energy. However, no confirmed bearish reversal candle. And price topped out. It just so happens that wave number seven, letter G, uh, price has just been trading sideways uh, ever since. So uh, you've got a topping, you've got topping signals. But you just don't have the bearish reversal candle. And this Gartley buy pattern on 30 minute basis for the equity futures contract could easily make a run to 1623. So if you're asking me, would you step into that trade right now at 145 in the afternoon? Stevie's answer is going to be no. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. You need to see some levels of support fail on a short term time frame, especially with these topping signals. And that would be 160830. Yes, you would have to pay more for the trade, but wouldn't you want to see support fail? when you have a topping pattern. Remember, we're kind of, it doesn't matter what the symbol is, it doesn't matter what the time frame is, we use the same set of tools as we analyze uh, those charts. And here, from a 30-minute standpoint, you want to see some type of nice confirmed top. And on a 30-minute basis, that means, because you've got the topping signals, you want to see support fail. If support doesn't fail, it tells you about strength that's out there. That's the best that I can share with you, and that's just the Stevie, um, process and being able to analyze the chart. So, Phil, thanks for writing in. Jimmy, I hope that helps you out as well with regard to what the uh, markets are doing. Tim writes in. He wants to take a look at GD. GD is General Dynamics. Let's take a look at what GD is doing out here. And uh, let's go ahead and read Tim's question. Has GD hit a bottom? And where is a good entry point? So it may have. Yesterday happened to be a TD set up uh, nine count. Uh, I knew that right away. Just simply I pulled over. So the instruments that we're going to look at, IWM, GD5, and EXAS. And so, uh, you know, part of the tools that I'm developing here so I can take a look at really all the time frames for instruments like that, meaning individual stocks or ETFs out there and see what their uh, TD9 counts are. And so on the daily time frame, we can see General Dynamics yesterday was it bar number nine out here. I can also see if there's any road momentum indicator signals out there. We can see you've got a confirmed bottom in EXAS on a daily time frame. We're going to go take a look at that. But let's get back here to uh, general dynamics. What do we know about general dynamics? Well, let's pull over the daily time frame chart, the daily time frame chart that shows the TD setup nine count. Now, the beauty about this is that you form this nine count right below or right above the breakout level, 174.92. So this has promise. But we can also see that Steve green line had turned red yesterday. What that means is that we're about to see over the course of the coming trading sessions, Tim, a test of Stevie's oscillator and change line. 181.34 is the current level. If priced, so you've got a bottom. So this says that what buyer's responsibilities are to try to see if it can break out above resistance. Well, the first level of resistance on this is 180.69. That's been rejected today. That's the bottom of its daily profile. The second area is 181.34. So you've got to see, or you'd like to see, ultimately, Tim, price be able to close above those levels. If it were me out here, if it were me, I'd wait to see what price does as it tests the oscillator and change line. Then you've got other areas of resistance out here, 185.20. Uh, that's where price had broken down on yesterday's confirmed TD9 count, and then 186.08. But it does look like a bottom, absolutely. You just don't like to see the um, rejection so far of uh, price. And the fact that that line turned red tells us the price oscillator is below zero. So if it, if it tests it and rejects it, means it closed back below that level, it's not really a great scene out there. That's what I see when I take a look at general dynamics on a daily basis out here. Um, I don't see anything else that shows up on the other time frames worth, uh, worth taking a look at. So, Tim, I hope that helps you out, and best of luck with your trade on general dynamics. Uh, Eddie writes in and says, can we take a look at five? Five, because five is alive. And we're alive out here, and we're doing the show live. So if we take a look at five, can you look at it? We're looking at it. Reports earnings this afternoon. So Eddie's wondering, hey, does five alive show anything? And we said that five showed uh, nothing when we took a look at that uh, one tool out here. And if we take a look at the daily time frame, any kind of signal for you and I. Um, no, it's trading below. Uh, support of its uh, bottom of its daily profile. It's trading below Stevie's red line. Uh, looks like uh, there's trading below a hammer candle uh, that formed out here on October the uh, 4th. It's trading below the breakout area, which is 119.09 out there. So 
uh, any, there's no signal to try to enter this to not that, not that it can't have a, uh, there's no tell is basically what I'd like to say. When I take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, there's no tell to suggest that a bottom has formed inside of five alive. Price is trading on a weekly basis below. It's a bullish structured profile out there. So that's not a good scene. If I look at the uh, weekly time frame charts below Stevie's green line, uh, bar number six of a TD setup nine count looks to me like, uh, Eddie, this wants to continue moving lower. If there's any tell right now, it's that no matter what the earnings are, uh, looks like sellers are ready to continue selling five alive. I hope that helps you out. We're about to go to break. When we come back from it, we will go ahead and finish the show off by taking a look at ticker symbol EXAS. EXAS is um, Exact Sciences. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol EXAS. And the uh, question is, could you please look at EXA and suggest there's a bottom in the uh, stock price is a good time to buy a few shares. So. Um, here's what we know. First, here's our daily time frame, daily, weekly, monthly time frame charts. And price is trading with inside the consolidation of its daily profile. That's between 78.88 and 82, 83, 83.11 out there. 
The weekly time frame chart has a confirmed A to B equals CD. What do I mean by that? If we take a look at the uh, A to B point, the B point takes us down to the uh, trading week of September 30th. That had volume of 10 million shares. When price closed below that, it was the week that began November 4th and was 14 million shares. So over the longer haul, this still has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern that could or should take price down to about 61.95. That doesn't mean there's not a counter trend rally and a counter trend rally up to the bottom of its weekly profile in the 89.84 level. Price is below the monthly profile as well, and resistance there is 84.44. So let's go for the easy one. 84.44 is resistance. I had mentioned uh, my tools showed that there was a uh, bottom, at least a temporary bottom or short-term bottom. Price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, a little spike on November 23rd, but it just didn't have the energy. And the very next day, you had that nice uh, bullish uh, reversal candle, a Three River Morning Star, as well as a bull sash candle. But price has struggled to clear resistance since then, and that is the top of that profile. The reality is there was a big old bearish engulfing candle the day of November 22nd. And so real resistance out here, forget the profile level, although it is resistance, but your real resistance out here is going to be the high from November the 20th. That was a body of a candle that was engulfed. And a son of a gun, let me try to do it this way here. What was that high for you? So you, you could nibble, but I would wait if there's a close above 8209 but just remember your risk reward may only be 8444 to 8984 it looks to me like more of a counter trend rally type bottom versus a solid bottom folks thanks so much for being here stay tuned david white's up next tom o'brien obi-wan kenobi to take you home from there i'll be back with you hopefully the dentist doesn't do too much surgery on terrific thursday tomorrow take care Thank you.